Marhaban, ahlan wa sahlan bikum. Today's lesson is going to be from page 36 and is about some rules governing Hamza. Ba'adu qawa'idi kitabat al-Hamza. People ask question, how do I know where to put Hamza? Sometimes I find it on the wall, sometimes I find it underneath the alif, or underneath the ya, and so on. I thought we can simplify this a little bit. So let's have a look at these rules governing Hamza. Before that, let me just call your attention to, these are the main areas where you find Hamza written. Hamza, most of the time, needs a chair on which to sit or to hide. Now, you find Hamza sometimes under the alif, karin kesra, or by itself, on the floor, uh, after ya, uh, in this shape, this shape is called a nabra. It's written on a nabra. When all that will be explained shortly, we're just calling your attention where you may find Hamza. You can find Hamza on the Alif, Karim Dhamma, or on the Wow, Karim Dhamma, or just the details of the shape, Karim Dhamma, Nabra again, Karim Dhamma by itself, Karim Alif. And carrying two kesra, then we in kesra, then we in domma, then we in fatha, or carrying sukun. You see Hamza in all sorts of uh, places indeed. But very important note is this when I'm teaching my student how to read, I say, Look, Hamza has no sound of its own. What you need to do is, it doesn't matter where you find Hamza. Whether it's sitting on a ya, on a wa, whatever, ignore everything. Just pronounce the vowel. For instance, you just say e, say e, and e, and o, 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 and o, ah, ah, and ah, and ah, in, in, on, on, and, and, and the o, oh, sukun, and so on. Regardless of where you find Hamza, just go for the vowel and pronounce the vowel and you will be right. You will be fine. So this is uh, just a little bit of uh, uh, introduction. Now we are going to go to page 36 and look at uh, how to wear and how to write Hamza in some detail. Let's do that. Now let's be brave and do some analysis of some rules governing Hamza. How to write Hamza. Now, uh, Hamza at the beginning of a word in Arabic, uh, there are two types of them. The first type, which is called Hamzatul Wasli. Hamzatul Wasli is what you can term as a weak alif. Meaning, you write an alif, but without the Hamza symbol on top of it or below it. That is called Hamza tul wasl. And, uh, and that Hamza, you pronounce it only. That's Hamza tul wasl, as Alif without a Hamza. You pronounce it only when it's at the beginning, when you start with it. For instance, if you say Al uh, Kitabu, uh, you can hear A. Ah. But if you have something before that a, uh, like for instance, fi, fil kitabi, that alif is silent. You suppress it, as we will see. So Hamza tul wasl, first of all, you find it in the uh, one of the fol followings. Number one, fi'al amr al When you have a simple verb, three root letter, only three. You find you can find this Hamza Tlwas, such as Ijlis Amr Thulathi. That's a command. That's your imperative. Ijlis, that alif of imperative is Hamza Tulwas. As you can see, there is no Hamza underneath it or Hamza above it. So it is an Hamza Hamza Tulwas, a weak alif. You pronounce it only when you start with this one. You say, Ijlis, sit down in front of the place. But if you say, Wajlis uh, um, Ma'ahu, 
wow and then ageless you don't say wa ageless you say watchless that's alif is still there with his hands to whistle but it's suppressed you don't hear it that's what i mean by it is pronounced only when you start with it so ageless another uh uh maadi al khumasi maadi fi'lun maadi fi'lun maadin means past tense in arabic fi'lun is a verb maadin that means past fi'lun maadin here maadi al khumasi al khumasi meaning you have three letters which is such as in english this one is tama'a is tama'a so the alif it mean talata arba khamsa so wahid it mean talata arba khamsa you have five letters there so it's called al khumasi in english grammar that this kind of verb which is form you say from sami'a is tama'a that is your form 8 is called ala wasn ifta'ala that's form 8 so the alif in form 8 past tense is hamzatul wasl you pronounce it only if you start with it so istama also amr al khumasi the imperative alif of the uh, form 8 as well is you don't write hamza on it so istami'a listen istami'a so in the past tense of al khumasi from 8 and in the imperative the alif you have there is hamzatul wasl a weak alif does it shouldn't carry hamza don't put hamza on it also masdar al khumasi uh, masdar is verbal noun that what is master is and istima that is verbal noun of form 8 ifta'ala yifta'ilu ifti'al istima so those alif they are hamzatul wasl you must not put symbol of hamza on it that's no one again when you go further this is also khumasi in fa'ala in fa'ala and that is your form 7 in fa'ala that's form 7 in terms of the uh the the grammar or the tasrif or conjugation so in fa'ala is called khumasi because you have five letters there you can see that the, the original root letter is in black here so original root letter is fa and ain and la so if ta'ala if in fi'al so you have in fa'ala in fi'al in fa'ala that's your fi'lun madhi is past tense in fi'al is your masdar which is your verb noun now again that from some seven in the past tense should not carry symbol of hamza and in the uh master which is your um uh verb noun that's alif also should not carry hamza symbol again here you have ifta'ala which is equivalent to istama'a you can see fa so here you can tell this is your first root is equivalent to if this is extra alif and this is extra ta which is here so your original uh letters here are sin mim and ayn because it's form 8 so ala wazin ifta'ala uh ifti'al again ifta'ala yafta'ilu ifti'al that alif should not carry hamza symbol either now let's look at uh istaf'ala istaf'ala that is your uh uh sudasi So wahid it mean 3 4 5 6 it carries six letters and that's it istaf'ala that's your form 10 in terms of the english is that is taf'ala that's the verb we start with ista and you have your three root letter that is called form 10 in english 
So again, in the past tense, that alif should not be written with Hamza uh, symbol. And in the verbal noun, mustar, also of Sudasi, it should not have the symbol of Hamza either. So istifala and the istifal. Lastly, in this section, L, the L of the article, the, you mustn't write Hamza on the alif of the, L, al-kitabu. Don't put Hamza on the alif because it is a weak alif which is called Hamzatul Wasl. So, Hamzatul Wasl is a weak alif which should not carry Hamza symbol. Now, you, you, you need, once you learn all these rules, you need to look around and say, well, how, shall I put Hamza on this alif or not? So, if it's one of these, don't put uh, Hamza on it at all. We're going to now extend it and tell you more about where you can find Hamza to Wassel, where you should not put the symbol of Hamza on that alif. Let's do that. Now, in addition to what we have just uh, explained, the following nouns also should not carry a symbol of Hamza because the alif in them is Hamza to Wassel. One of them is Isim. When you write Isim, Isim means a name. Don't put Hamza underneath your Alif because this Alif is Hamza to Wassel. Should not carry the symbol of Hamza. So Isim must not be written with the symbol of Hamza under the Alif. Next one. Imra'atun. Imra'a. Imra'a means a woman. Imra'atun. The alif in Imra'a also is a Hamza to Wassel, which should not carry the symbol of Hamza. Ibn, a son, a son also, alif there is Hamza to Wassel. Don't write Ibn with Hamza underneath it at all. It is Hamza to Wassel. Ibnatun, daughter, is the same alif. Again, Ibnun, Ibnatun. Don't write symbol of Hamza because it's, all these are. Alif or oh, Hamza to Wassel. Ithnani, when you are counting, Wahad Ithnan, or Ithnain if you want to, uh, a genitive or accusative, Ithnan, the Alif of Ithnan, don't put Hamza on it either because it's Hamza to Wassel. Imru'un, Imru'un, like a, a person, so Imru'un, once the gain Alif is Hamza to Wassel. Imra'atani, you have Imra'atun, a woman, Imra'atani, two women, also that Alif should not carry a Hamzat symbol. Ibnun, Ibnani, again the same thing, as Alif also is a Hamzat wassel, and Ibnatani, the same, and Ithnani, Ithnatani, Ithnataini, Ithnaini, all of them. So any of these, now you have been told, don't write Hamza symbol on, on them. You no, don't say, I don't know whether I should or should not. No, you should not, because they are Hamza to Wassel. So the previous one we've dealt with uh, in the verbs section, uh, note you don't write when you say Ijlis, when you say Uktub, when you say Idhab, all those imperative as explained, don't put the symbol of Hamza because those alifs, they are Hamza to Wassel. So that's the first section of the Hamza when it is at the beginning of word in Arabic. And that is called Hamza to Al Wassel. We're going to look at now the, the second type of Hamza beginning. And that is called Hamza to Qata. Hamza to Qata, which you can uh, term as a strong Hamza, which means an alif must have have the symbol of Hamza on it. Let's have a look at that. Now, let's uh, uh, deal with the second type of Hamza at the beginning of word. So, the second one is called Hamza to Qata. Hamza to Qata means a strong alif. A strong alif meaning he's carrying actually the symbol of Hamza. And that's a strong one. The one we've dealt with before is 
Hamzatul Wasl, which is a weak alif, which doesn't have the symbol of Hamza on it, on, on, underneath or above, and it can only be pronounced at the beginning. When something, uh, when you have anything, even a single letter before it, you suppress the sound of it, and that is Hamzatul Wasl. Now, the Hamzatul Qata, a strong alif, is carrying the Hamza. Where do we find it? Fi'lum Maudin. When you have the past tense verb, Thulathi, which is only three letters, like this one, Akala. It's the Akala, uh, Adina, Asara, Amala, all those verbs, three letters, and the first root letter is Hamza. That alif must carry the symbol because that Hamza is Hamza tul Qata. And Hamza tul Qata must be pronounced all the time, every time. Doesn't matter whether a letter before it, letter after, doesn't matter. You cannot suppress the sound of Hamza tul Qata. You have to pronounce it Qata'an. You have to really pronounce it. And that's what is called Hamza tul Qata. Akala. Wa masdaruhu. Also, fi'alun thulathi. When you have the past tense with three letters uh, in the past tense as well as the um, mustard, which is a verbal noun. So, akala eklun. Again, you have to pronounce it. But the only one which is in the, in the three letters uh, uh, verb, thulafi, which is carrying the uh, hamza tul wasl, is the fi'al amr. When you are giving instruction, which is your imperative, ijlis, uktub, whenever you are using the imperative with that simple verbs, uh, three letters, don't put hamza on it. So, ijlis, uktub, idhab, iftah, uh, and so on. Ifham, and so on. Okay? Now, but in the, in the past tense and the mustard, which is your uh, verb noun, you must use your hamza tul qada. Now, the second place where you see you, fi you find Hamza al Qata is Maad al Rubai, where you have the four letters in English that's your form four, Af Hama. All those forms are going to be explained to you later on, I think, in uh, book six later on. Let's take it step by step, okay? So, so the second place where you find the Hamza al Qata is uh, al Rubai. And that is your form four, such as af hammer. When you write him as form four verbs, you must put hamza on top of the alif because it's hamza tul qata. Uh, whether it's maadi, uh, uh, past tense of that verb, or fi'al amr, which is the imperative, or verb noun, which is master. So af hammer, af him, if ham. The rubai is always carry. Hamzat al qata The third place when you find the Hamzat al qata is the following uh, 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 nouns, which is start started with the with the alif or Hamzat al was uh, Hamzat al qata So number one, uh, apart from all the nouns that we have mentioned in the in the past for the Hamzat al uh any other noun, you need to put. Hamza al Qata. So, like Ahmad, Anas, Insan, Usbu, and so on. The important thing is uh, revise the Hamza al Wasl, the weak alif one, where I listed some nouns like uh, uh, Imra'atun, Imra'atani, Ithnani, Ithnatani. Those nouns you need to be mindful to make sure you don't put symbol of Hamza on them because it's Hamza al Wasl. Uh, al -wasl. Any other than that, just this is just an example, really. For as long as it's not, it's not part of the, the, the noun listed for you, the Hamza to the put Hamza on it, either above it or uh, underneath it, as uh, may be appropriate. Okay? So that is your, a very brief analysis of uh, how you deal with Hamza when it's at the beginning. All this just at the beginning. You have something to start with Hamza. So either is Hamza tul uh, wasl, the one with a weak alif that uh, you don't put the symbol of Hamza on it or underneath it or above, or uh, Hamza tul qata, and you know where to look for those one. So I think not to extend it too much. I'll then I will deal in the next lesson, inshallah, 
when we find Hamza in the middle, not at the beginning, in the middle, sandwich, what are we going to do? That will be the subject of next lesson, inshallah. So, go and have a good cup of tea, good cup of coffee or water, which is my, what I prefer, and revise this for me and digest it and take it step by step, please. Don't tell me it's too difficult. It's not. Just take it easy. Watch it again, over, again, 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 again. You will get it, inshallah. So I see you next time when I will discuss the Hamza in the middle, how to deal with, with that situation. Okay? Until then, ma'asalama ila liqa fi amalillah.